Okay. Well, everyone, thank you very much for joining us on Monday evening and, and taking time to, to be with us. I, I appreciate it. And I'm going to try to make it worth your while and share some things that, that might uh, be practical for you in the future. So the, uh, this, this, one, this session will be a little bit different than the others in that the other ones kind of centered around types of alcohol. That was, was kind of the brainchild or, or the idea of, of uh, more Boston. It was a good way to organize this series by types of alcohol. So we did vodka in the first one, whiskey in the second one, gin in the third. This one is going to focus more on uh, party prep. And tail and and especially tailgate prep, and uh, that uh, is is kind of we're in the, the the heart of the season. Although this is an unusual year, so hopefully this will help you going forward whenever things do get back to normal. So uh, that's that's going to be the theme of of this one. So we will make some drinks, but it, it the the uh, the intent of this is more about some techniques and tricks that. That we might be able to leverage uh, to, to help us whenever to take the stress off and to uh, help us uh, to get ready for these these types of events when we've got uh, people to entertain and we want to make them drinks or we want to take our drinks with us to entertain people when we're at a football game or other things as we'll learn this evening so i have a couple couple uh surprises that that you might not think about where you might be able to use this um but we'll uh we'll see if it if it helps you with any any ideas going forward so as, as always, just want to start off real, real quick because safety is important. So uh, just keep in mind, uh, a lot of these drinks tonight are going to be more than, than one standard serving of alcohol. Some of them might be two or even three standard servings of alcohol. And most people can metabolize one standard serving of alcohol per hour. And after that, you're, you are effectively legally intoxicated, so you should be driving. But beyond that, you know, even as you rack up more and more uh, with, with, within a, a short amount of time, that's where you can get the uh, undesirable effects of, of alcohol. So keep that in mind with your guests. The standard serving sizes are 12 ounces of beer, four ounces of wine, and one and a quarter ounce of 80 proof liquor, which most of the liquors we deal with are, are 80 proof or 40% alcohol, or one ounce of 100 proof liquor. So if you're mixing two or three uh, of, of those portions, as we will be with a lot of these drinks tonight, keep in mind you're already at two, two and a half, maybe even three standard servings. And so that, that's going to put you potentially over the edge for, for being legally intoxicated and uh, will also go towards your, your tolerance. So I uh, always like to start with safety. And um, the previous sessions that we have, some of them have been recorded and I, I believe they're out on, on Vimeo. Uh, you yeah. will not there's no prior knowledge required you haven't if you're joining this one as your first first one that's not a problem you can always go back and, and look at some of the topics uh we will try to go uh and, and cover everything in a way that if you've missed some of them it won't it won't impact your your ability to learn here um, and if you have questions as we go along please interrupt me shout over me get carrie's attention or, uh, or uh if you have questions please stop me it's, it's always better if it's interactive this is I have it set up so I can lecture. I have probably more than an hour's worth of material, but uh, if if you uh, it's better if you if you stop me and, and get your questions answered because uh, you can learn as more and more uh, doing it that way. So uh, please don't hesitate to to uh, stop us. But just a quick quick review of what we went through. The most each time we try to cover a couple important points. So in the first session, which focused on vodka. The, uh, the important points were number one, safety, which we always review that at the start of each session. Number two, the, the fundamentals of bartending. So the, the, the uh, uh, five clears, so we call them the five clears and they're missing from this table and we'll find out why in a minute, why the five clears are usually, five clears plus whiskey are usually up here when we start. Uh, you'll see why in a few minutes why they're not here, but the five clears are gin, rum, tequila, triple sec, vodka, and those are the five, and then whiskey. And those those six liquors will give you, you can do dozens of drinks with those basic liquors. And uh, that's that's why they, they are important. And that was part of the fundamentals in Weston One. We re reviewed some common barware, you know, what a martini glass is versus what a Collins glass is, that type of thing. Uh, and we reviewed free pouring technique, which we will do a, a real quick brush on that as we get into the lesson today, but those are some of the common themes uh, that 
or those are the, were the important points from, from session one on, on vodka. Episode two was whiskey. And so we had a couple interesting things there. Number one, the spelling itself, W-H-I-S-K-E-Y versus W-H-I-S-K-Y. We talked about that, why that is an actual point of distinction and a difference. Uh, we talked about the fact that the most important ingredient in making whiskey is actually time, not necessarily a physical ingredient, although physical ingredients and geography also factor into uh, whiskey making. So whiskey is one of the most complicated liquors that there are because there are so many rules about how you have to make it in terms of ingredients, the amount of time it needs to age, the geography where it needs to be distilled and, and bottled and aged. And so much so that we actually, during that lesson, if you remember, we, had, we, we made a Venn diagram of whiskey because it's such a complicated topic. So we had that during the lesson uh, because there's, there's so many crossovers with the different types um, episode three, we went over gin, and probably the most important point in that one is that the uh, the most important ingredient in gin is juniper berries, and in fact, that's the only thing that's required. It's, it's far less complicated to make gin. There's far less rules and regulations. There's almost no ge geographical restrictions, no ingredient restrictions, other than the fact that in order to be called gin, it should have at least some amount of juniper berries in the distilled uh, liquor after, at least steep it in the liquor after it's after it's distilled. And so, because it's much more simpler, uh, it's much it's a much more simple set of of uh, uh, liquors. The the biggest lion's share of it that you will see on store shelves and really worldwide is London Dry Gin. So, because it's it's so simple and there's such a critical mass around that, instead of a Venn diagram, we ended up with the gin solar system, where London dry gin is the sun and all the other types of gin are like little tiny planets orbiting the London dry gin sun. And so that's basically the, the topic that we, or the, uh, the, the critical point that we talked about uh, in the gin episode. And so that brings us to today's episode. So today's episode on party and tailgating bartending, uh, the, the things, the important, two important things that I, that I wanna bring to focus today are that when you're dealing with tailgate and party, these are the two constraints that you have, time and space. And this actually, this, this is also a factor for commercial bartenders, especially time, because they gotta be able to, to produce drinks quickly. So, you know, dozens or, you know, maybe a hundred drinks an hour in some commercial bartending settings, they have less constraint on space and their space is optimized and, and to, to do that. But in certain scenarios that we're going to go over today, you have very little of both of these, or you may be constrained on more so on one than the other. So we're going to talk about how to deal with those. So bartenders lean on their training in order to negotiate and get around these two constraints. But we'll also give you some tools here that will enable you to, uh, to, to help uh, alleviate these and it will eliminate your stress. It'll increase the amount of time that you have to spend with guests and friends. And it will also uh, increase the enjoyment that you, get, that you get out of your party. So in terms of time, so, and I, I'll keep an eye, eye out on that myself today. Uh, the number one thing you can do uh, to, to make sure that, you're, that, you're, that you have uh, enough time when you're at your event, whether it be a party at your house or a tailgate, is you got to make sure you have everything you need in advance. So think about it. Think about, put yourself in game day. You're, you're at the tailgate and you're making drinks. You're making that first drink for, for the person. Think about what you're actually going to do. And, and you might want to practice it, memorize the ingredients. You don't want to be thumbing through your phone or, or, she, or sheets of paper trying to get the proportions. You want to know that in advance. Uh, you want to prepare your drinks in advance if you, if you can. And we'll, we'll show you a couple of ways to do that. Make pre-made portions or pre-made pre drinks that you just kind of pour out. Uh, if you are still mixing some drinks on the fly, which you might be certainly in a party scenario or uh, you want to use shortcuts. So we've talked about some shortcuts in the past. So you've got drink mixers, 
You don't, you do not have to make your drinks from scratch or the classic way. Some of the drinks will make the classic way just to show you what's in them, but uh, you, you don't need to stick to that and you, to still get a tasty drink out of it. So you want to use shortcuts, you want to use pre-made mixes, things like that to, to, to help you out. You want to limit your menu. So you don't want to have to, you don't want to be able to come with like two dozen drinks. Uh, or if you do, make sure you know how to do that effectively with uh, maybe a half dozen ingredients. So uh, some of that, again, is the training and the experience that you might have. But the other, the other way, especially as you're building that repertoire and that knowledge is to just limit the, the menu. People will drink what you offer. And if not, they, they just weren't gonna do it. Anyway, they'll find something, something else to drink. Um, practice your recipes in advance. So if, you, if you're gonna make something new, it's just like anything else. If you're going to cook something new for dinner, you're, you're probably going to try it out and see how it tastes before you make it for a bunch of your friends. And same thing with same thing with drinks. Make it at home before you before you try to serve it to someone. That will also get you get you into knowing what the timing is or the ingredients or, or uh, how to physically how to make it and how to present it so that it looks nice. And um, we'll also talk a little bit about disposable barware, which can save you both time, both before and after in the cleanup and you know where, where to get some of that stuff and how to, how to use it, where to use it and, and how that can help you um, with really both time and space management. So when we get into the space and uh, that is why instead of all the bottles, we have a small cooler in front of us this evening as we get into this discussion. So uh, with space, number one thing you can do is practice fitting everything that you need into a small cooler and start with a small, small cooler. So uh, limit yourself to this. And then when you move up the scale a little bit, and that's what we'll do in a couple minutes from now, when you move up the scale to a bigger cooler, you've got a lot more real estate to work with. But if you know what you're doing here, you can definitely scale that up to here very easily. and, and uh, that will, uh, will improve and it, it will increase what you can offer. So uh, the this is a six quart cooler. And so let's just open it up and see what we might even be able to fit in the six quart cooler. Okay, so first of all, you're, you're usually gonna have ice packs in it. So what I can recommend, this is a gel ice pack. So you can see this thing is very flexible, it squishes and so, it's helpful because you, you can conform it around what, whatever else you have in your cooler versus if you have a rigid ice pack, like something like this, or sometimes they're like little cubes like this. These, the way they freeze, that's the only way they're gonna fit in here. So if you can fit it in, great, but if not, you're, you're gonna be, you're gonna to have to work around whatever ice packs you have. So that's that's one thing that, that I could recommend is find some, some gel ice packs. And these can you can get these uh, you can get these at sporting goods stores. Uh, this these ones actually came, I think, from the Schwann man. So we must have had some Schwann's food delivered at some point, and these were in the, the uh the food, and so to save them because they're handy. So also in here. Just happen to have, if you, if you have a couple beers, you can put that in there. Or uh, what you might wanna have if you're mixing things is some soda water or some lemon lime soda or Coke, if you're doing rum and Cokes or something like that. Um, so we got room for that. We have a one quart bottle in here and we'll see later if we have time, uh, how you can scale up your drink mixes. So, and remember how we talked about pre-made drinks? This is where they'll go. And a, a, a double thing that you wanna do both with this, depending on the type of drink that you're making and what you're gonna see in the next size up cooler, freeze your alcohol if you, if, if you can. Because what that will do is, that's almost like having built-in ice, ice bags in your cooler. If you make a drink that is strong enough, it will not freeze or at worst, it'll freeze in kind of like a slushy state and it'll thaw very quickly. You can, you can pour it out. Now there's certain drinks you don't wanna, if you pre-mix them, you don't wanna freeze them because they will freeze solid. But if the alcohol content is high enough and depending on the setting that your freezer's at, 
you will be able to freeze that and still have a liquid or at least a slushy form. And then it, it almost doubles as an ice pack in your cooler. So not only are you not, so instead of this, this gel ice pack, you could put a one quart bag of ice cubes and not have the ice and not have your drink suck all the heat out of your ice cubes so that you're left with a puddle. You may actually have some ice cubes that you could use to serve your drinks with afterwards. So, I mean, we got some other things in here. We got some straws, we got fruit, we got shot glass, we got toothpicks. You know, there's a the, the way, depending on how you pack your cooler, depending on what you need, Maybe you need a knife for your fruit, put that in there, a, a can opener, a, 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 wine, a wine key, uh, anything you need. And here is the one, th what this is going to become very important during the lesson. So this is a four ounce, these are mini ball jars. I found these and this is what it looks like. These are Walmart. It's like about $4 for this. And they are, uh, there's four of them and they're around, they're about four ounces. That's what it looks like. So that's sitting in the bottom of our core. And we'll find out next why, why this little guy is important or can be important if you want to make single serve drinks on the go. So that's your that's your six quart cooler. So this is more like this is kind of like a, uh, a one bedroom apartment. All right, now we're going to go to more like a 2000 square foot ranch. And this is not so this is not even the size of a lot of coolers that you'd see out there like yetis it's not a fancy cooler this is just an igloo this was actually i got this when i was up in rochester wegmans but they're probably you probably get them at you know like fourth of july uh at giant eagle or at digs i'm sure they have have some it's a 30 quart cooler but let's see what we have in here all right so we even have our five cleaners sitting out at the start of the discussion because guess why we got them all in here so here's our rum here's our gin here's our tequila here's our vodka here is all right now we've got this blue liquid in here and this is going to be another important part of the discussion later on today uh since these are these are irish uh themed drinks we're going to need blue cure sound instead of triple sec it's almost the same thing so instead of that we got that. We even have a couple of drink mixers in here. We've got our sweet and sour mix. We've got a, a, a mix that we could use for uh, this. Is, this is um, ginger beer and lime. This is for making mules. So mules have, have gotten very popular in the last couple of years and you can make a bunch of different types of drinks. So you can make bourbon based, vodka based, even tequila based, uh, or, or I'll mention today, Irish whiskey based. A, uh, an Irish mule out of this mixer that you have in your cooler. And we've, we've got our whiskey too. So you have an entire bar in here. And I didn't show you, there was a lot of space in there that, that was still still available. So you could have ice in there. So when you're going to the tailgate, you can try to freeze your own ice, but what I'd actually recommend, it's very inexpensive. A bag of ice like this is about $2. This is a seven pound bag. I think sheet sells them in similar size in about an eight pound bag, but it fits very easily into here. You could fit probably two bags of ice in here and still fit not all of these, but most of these, so depending on what you want, what you need. If you're really gonna need a lot of ice, you could fit that in there as well, or you could just put all your stuff in there, including all your mixers and all of your tools in there and just have your ice in a separate cooler. Now, when you get a bag of ice like this, I'm sure most people have seen, sometimes they're hard to deal with at first. They have a tendency when you get them from the store, they're frozen into solid mass. So what you're going to, going to want to probably do while you're still home and you got clean, smooth surfaces, you're going to want to drop it a couple times on, on your kitchen table or if it's really frozen solid, drop it on, the, on a clean floor or something like that to get it loosened up. Now, the other thing about these is they all, they always come crimped with like these metal things and you can't even use pliers to get that metal thing off. So you got to kind of work it off. And I would recommend doing this ahead of time because if otherwise, if you're like me, what you end up doing, you get to where you're going, you're excited, it's game day. What you end up doing inevitably, you rip the bag open and the ice is sometimes it gets contained, sometimes it's not, sometimes it gets contaminated. So what you, what you want to do, loosen it up, 
don't drop it on like pavement or concrete because with that end, when it drops it and if it drops on pavement or concrete it puts little pinholes in the in the bag so the bag will leak when when it gets water when it gets melted and it it, it could allow contamination in so you want to keep the bag as intact as possible take that crimp off you got to kind of just work it and wriggle it it only takes a minute but do it ahead of time and then substitute a twisty tie with it because then throughout your tailgate or your party, you've got a relatively clean vessel. You can use a scoop to, to get that in and keep it sanitary. This is the ice you wanna be using to mix your drinks with. You might have ice in there that's just for cooling. If you don't have a bunch of, of cooler packs or you don't freeze your alcohol into you know, kind of self-made ice packs, you may have ice in there, but you may not want to be using that ice if it's, you know, if it's contaminated or dirty, or you, you know, you don't want to be putting your hands in it. So that's how to, that's how to kind of keep your ice relatively clean and have a dedicated bag of ice that you're going to use to serve. So let's put this aside for now. But you, you can kind of see if you pack your cooler efficiently, you can get a whole lot of stuff in there, and you end up with something that's. This is really not that much space. Uh, so, you know, there's two reasons you may want to do that. Number one, you probably don't want to be carrying this all the way across campus or, uh, you know, if, even if you have a, a vehicle, that's not the only thing you're going to pack when you're going to a game. You've got luggage and all kinds of other stuff. So you may not want to use a whole, you know, 100 and, 120 quart Yeti taking up space in your trunk. Um, or, you know, you may need another cooler for food or you could take half of this and put your you know your your um, bar in half of it, food in the other half. But this 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 gives you a lot of lot of space if you if you think about it ahead of time. So that's some ideas about how to to get around the the space constraint that that you might have in a a, a tailgate or a party. Because if you think about maybe even like your kitchen. You haven't, you're having people over that your bar is not your own, the only thing you have. You may have in your kitchen, you've got a whole bunch of food. Uh, you may have only so much space that you can dedicate to your bar. So you're still going to have space constraints. They may not be the same as they are at a, at a tailgate, but you're always going to have some level of space constraints. So think about how to organize your things uh, effectively so that, so that it alleviates that. Okay. I want to spend a real Quick, we're about halfway through the hour. I want to spend a real quick few minutes on disposable barware that you that you can uh, use when you're specifically for tailgates or at, at, at a party where it'll make cleanup a lot easier for you, and uh, that's you, you don't have to worry as much about contamination. Um, and uh, when you when you've got disposable, so. The other thing is just because you're at a tailgate doesn't mean that presentation isn't important. So you're gonna take the time to make drinks, maybe make them nice, nicely presented, color them right, mix them right. And if what you're gonna end up doing is put, put it, putting them in the, the equivalent, like the 16 ounce equivalent of this, you know, the, the solo cup, which there's definitely nothing wrong with the solo cup, but for the same effectively, effect, effectively the same effort you could have a margarita and put it in like an actual margarita glass or a martini and put it in what looks like a martini glass so these things come in packs like this i used to get them at party city and i'm not exactly sure i don't know if well i haven't seen them at walmart because uh, i haven't bought them in a while but they come in bags of 20 like this and so you they are stacked like this you get them you put them together and then you can have a uh, martini glass or a margarita glass or any other kind of glass that you want. The other thing that you, you can see out there is you can use these, these shot glass cups or at the dollar store, they have these, they're nice clear shot glasses. So if you're, if you're making a, a shot or a cordial that has some nice color to it, or you want to show that off, you can have these glasses that, are, that, that look like they might be nice glass barware. So, I mean, same thing. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's, it's, a, it's the convenience of it, but just know that 
you do not have to sacrifice your presentation just because you need the uh, the flexibility or the safety of something that's not going to break break if it drops during the during the game or out on your out on your porch. Um, there's there's you don't have to sacrifice uh, sacrifice that uh, presentation aspect of it uh, just because you're you need to be portable or, or disposable. So uh, that's that's with that. So. Um, anything else? These are these are also ones that that I found that are kind of a nice upgrade. So this is a nine ounce glass, and what you would typically see in a nine ounce glass, something that looks like this. So this is kind of just a tall and skinny, but it's like it's cloudy. So this is the same thing. It's, this looks look more like a cocktail glass. It looks like an actual glass, even though it's plastic. So same thing, nine ounce glasses, but and for roughly the same price, these are maybe a little more expensive per, per unit, but uh, it, it still gives you uh, still gives you an option. Okay, so let's get, let's transition into couple of drinks then. So let me let me pause there for a minute and just see if there are any questions up to this point. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, just ask John because I inadvertently canceled the chat. So there's no chatting going on. So uh, feel free just to yell it out. John will gladly answer your questions. Yeah, shout, shout over me, but I'll, I'll pause and shut up for just a few seconds here while I kind of take some room. And uh, if anyone has anything, let me know. Uh, I just want to know if you're going to have a party at your house soon so you can be a bartender for the rest of us you, just because you have everything like ready to go. That's a really good idea. We yeah. could do that. We could do that at some point. That would that would actually be kind of fun. I, I don't know when the guidance uh, when the when the university is going to allow for that, but that that'd be fun. It would be fun. All right, I'll let you go, John. Yeah. Um, okay. So the first the first drink that we're going to make today, uh, we're we're actually going to circle back and cover something that we, we kind of ran out of time during the whiskey session, and I really felt remiss about it. So it, it is the Manhattan, because the Manhattan is probably the most quintessential wh whiskey drink that exists. It's the martini of, uh, it's the martini of, of uh, whiskeys. So you can make it with a bunch of different, you can make it a bunch of different ways. We're just gonna kind of make a stock Manhattan today, but we're gonna put a little twist on it. It's gonna be a golf cart Manhattan. So, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. So when you're, when you're golfing, remember we talked about, talk about constraints. You have both time and space constraints when you're golfing. So usually the best, best you could hope for is you bring your cooler with you and that's about all you get. So that's why this six inch, this six uh, quart cooler is, is a good demonstration item because that's about all you can take with you if you wanna bring it in with your, with your golf cart. And usually most people just bring some cans of beer. But let's paint this picture for you. All right, it's the second hole and you're already like four over. And there's already people behind you that are like wanting to play through. And this is only the second hole of 18. So you really need a Manhattan. You really need one, but you can't have one. Or can you? So we'll, learn, we'll, we'll find out how to make that happen and uh, with, our, with our golf cart Manhattan here. So which, First, first thing you need, you need to know how to make a Manhattan first. So we'll make it kind of the regular way. And we'll start out, start with your shaker and we're gonna get some ice here. And here's our portable scooper. These are also, I found these at the dollar store. They're like a, it's like a two pack. You get like a small one and a, and a large one in the, in the two pack. And this one's perfect because it's like travel size. So. Good. This is a good find and, and good to put with your, your travel kit. So we will not be doing this on the golf course, by the way, because we already talked about the fact that, you know, you have neither time nor space for this. So but this is just to demonstrate how, how to make a man happen. And because we didn't get to it when we, when we did the whiskey. So start off with that. And we're going to, so 
the Manhattans, if you if you do it straight up, so we're going to do this one straight up as opposed to on the rocks. So we'll use our martini glass, Yoder ice, and Manhattan. You can use any kind of whiskey that, that you that you want, and you'll use about two ounces of whiskey. So our free pour technique, for those of you who remember, it's a four count, and that, that gets you one ounce of alcohol. So Manhattan, we're going to do two ounces of alcohol. Um, a half ounce of sweet vermouth and then a little bit of bitters and, and a little bit of cherry juice in this in this particular recipe. So we'll start off. We're going to put a uh, eight count because that's two ounces of whiskey. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're going to add one half ounce of sweet vermouth. And this particular one is Antica Formula. This I would definitely recommend this over. It, it is pricey versus the other uh, vermouths that are out there, but it's actually worth it. You could drink this stuff straight, or I've even put it over ice cream before. It's very, it's very tasty. It's, it, I, I don't often go for the, like the higher ended with liquors, but this is worth the price. So you're going to put a half ounce, which is a, just a two count. So one, two of the sweet vermouth. And then well, some people, like a little bit of cherry juice from the maraschino cherry, go real light on it, half a teaspoon at most. So I just do a quick splash of the, of the cherry juice. And then you're going to, while you got it, you put your cherry, maraschino cherry in your glass here for your garnish on your Manhattan. And close this up so it doesn't spill. And the other uh, ingredient that is in a classic Manhattan is bitters. So the most common type is Angostura bitters. And go real easy with this stuff, two dashes, three at absolute most, you'll ruin your drink pretty quickly with this stuff. It's very, very powerful, very, very bitter. And this is not the only type of bitters that are out there. There has been like a bitters explosion in the last decade or so different companies have gotten into it. There's like all kinds of fruit flavors, all kinds of crazy spices and, and you name it, they have a bitters for it. But this is the original. This is like 150 years old. It basically has uh, citrus peel in it is the prevalent taste. It's like, it's like an orange, like a bitter orange. And so two dashes in a Manhattan, one, two more if you, if you really, if you're really into it, but definitely for most people, no more than two or even one dash if you want to go conservative. So take that up, pour that out. And this is your classic Manhattan. Now, we already said earlier, do not, you're obviously not going to attempt this while you're golfing. Don't even attempt this anywhere else, if you, especially if you're going to make these kind of portable single servings. So that is... When you factor in the ice melt, a little over three ounces, so you got two ounces of liquor, two, uh, uh, a half ounce of the, the sweet vermouth, and a little bit of ice melt off. So you've got by volume, a little over three ounces here. So you're going to take your four ounce jar and you're just going to transfer this in here. And I'm going to do it over the sink back here just in case it spills some of it. And you transfer the cherry and all into there. And voila, you now have a Manhattan, but that's not it. So when you go to when you go to serve it, if you want to even make it even make the presentation better, so you've got the you now have these that you can, and I mean you can fit a lot of these in a in a six quart cooler. I mean you can fit dozens of these. So if you want to have one or one or two rounds for a for an eighteen uh, round, you you can have Manhattans all day long. So one way to to kind of Make the presentation. You, have, you might want to start with a cocktail napkin, and since we're since we're celebrating Notre Dame and the Irish, we've got cupcake. You can use cupcake holders. This this one's like a green tint, but I've got golden um, golden blue one. So you kind of just put it in there. Put your cocktail napkin. Give them a straw. Hand it to them, and away you go. And that's how you get Manhattan on a golf course. And uh, that's uh, 
one way to become portable and defeat time and the space factor and, and yet still have a nice, uh, nicely presented drink. And by the way, this will not freeze. So you can put this in the, in a, the coldest freezer setting you have and then just the night or the morning of, just transfer it into your cooler and this will be as cold as temperature in your freezer below freezing for hours. Now, I will warn you, the, the cherry itself will be solid, so don't slug it and, and chomp into the cherry uh, because the cherry will be frozen when it's that cold, but it will still be liquid. So that's, that's uh, our number one drink. Uh, now, uh, the second drink we're going to make, so now we're going to try to get into the Notre Dame and Irish themed drinks. So this is more like the, the tailgate portion of, of, the, uh, of it. Um, so two drinks we're gonna make are the South Bend iced tea and leprechaun lemonade. And these are not, these are not uh, original drinks. These are shameless, uh, these are shameless ripoffs of, of classic drinks. Uh, the, the South Bend iced tea being Long, uh, Long Island iced tea and leprechaun lemonade is actually Lynchburg lemonade. But in both cases, we're going to do a critical substitution. So remember I mentioned earlier that your five clears, one of your five clears is triple sec, which is a, an orange flavored uh, liqueur. Uh, liqueur. It's like a schnapps. It's like 30 proof. So it's really 15% alcohol. So it's about, it's like about the, the uh, strength of a strong wine. This will freeze, uh, but, but none of the other liquors liquors will. So the substitution that you're going to have is blue curacao. So blue curacao is, it, it's almost exactly the same thing as triple sec. It's an orange flavored liqueur that has, has low proof and it's very sweet. And so when you add it to drinks, it makes them sweet. But the, di the key difference is it's blue. Now, why is that important for our drinks today? Because Long Island iced teas are brown because you splash, the last ingredient that you splash them with is Coca-Cola and that just gives the illusion of it's iced tea. And it does a little taste a little bit like iced tea, but that's mostly because of the sweet and sour mix that you're putting into it in combination with the flavor of the liquors. The brown gives it that optical illusion. And so because we drink with our eyes, before we even drink with our, our taste buds, that gives it even more of an illusion that it tastes like iced tea. Well. South Bend iced tea still tastes a little bit like iced tea, but it's green. And why is it green? Because instead of putting Coke as our last ingredient and using triple sec, we substitute blue curacao. And when you mix that with yellow, this is our shortcut, by the way, this is the, uh, the sweet and sour, sour mix. This is yellow. So when you mix the yellow and the blue, you get green. But I'll warn you, this, uh, depending on the brand you get, some of them are more powerful or, or more, have more blue dye in them than others. This one seems to have a lot of blue dye in it. So when I'm mixing it, I'm having to, to mix a lot more of the, the uh, sweet and sour mix in order to get the, the uh, color to balance to a nice green. One way to get around that, and if you don't have blue cure sour, if you don't really want to keep blue cure sour and triple sec around, you could just, keep triple sec and just add a little tiny bit of, of blue food dye if you've got it to your end, end result. And that actually may be an easier way to achieve the result because then you can mix it with clears. You don't have to worry as much about the, the strength of the, of the blue dye and the blue curacao. So, and then you can just drip, drip in the, uh, the blue food coloring into the, uh, into the triple sec. It'll give you the same result. So we're going to, uh, mix up a uh, mix up one of these and so Long Island iced teas are made of equal parts of your five clears so gin rum vodka triple sec and what I miss gin gin rum vodka triple sec uh gin? tequila tequila yes thank you so your five clears very good thank you so I'll all, so you're going to mix all five in equal parts, and then the balance is going to be roughly roughly equal part of the of the sweet and sour mix. And then with a, with a again with the uh, um, Long Island iced tea, the finishing effect is that splash of, of Coke that gives it the brown uh, the brown uh, color. So in this case, 
the, we're going to substitute this for your fifth ingredient. So here is a parlor trick that I'll show you real quick that some bartenders use to get a lot of time constraints. So we're going to have a mixture of fresh ice. And because this is Irish, we're going to use an Irish coffee mug to for effect. So fill that with ice as well. And I don't know if you can kind of see that with the Go Irish sign. Maybe I'll just kind of take this down for a minute, or slide it to the side. Okay, so there is our Irish coffee mug. Here is our here is our mixing vessel and the trick. So I think it might have been last last time someone had asked about the, the poor stalkers, and I had said, that, "Yeah, you can you can get these. My favorite ones are the plastic ones. These these can be had for ninety nine cents. I did look into that at at the uh, fine wine, just the state liquor stores. So they're they're pretty universal." Uh, these ones happen to be red. Usually they're black, but um, the trick that you, you can try, and I would advise you to practice this ahead of time, if you're going to try it, maybe have a little safety net, is what some bartenders will do when they're making a Long Island iced tea is to do the shortcut and to save themselves time. They'll grab four. The, they'll grab four out of the five bottles, or some of them will even attempt to grab all five at the same time. And this is, it's a half, the recipe is a half ounce of each of the five clears. So you're gonna do, so for half ounce, it's two seconds. So two seconds for all four of these into the glass. One, two. And so there should now be two ounces of fluid in this, in the, uh, the pour or in the uh, mixing glass. And then I did, I'm doing this separately just to show you like the, the, uh, this would normally be triple sec, but you're going to use two ounces or half ounce or two uh, two seconds of the blue pure cell. So one, two, all right, and you're going to mix this up. And with the ice melt up, you're going to get. Let me show you real quick with the measuring glass. Here's our three ounce mark. If you do it right, you should get close to three ounces. Uh, fluid with the ice melt off on this. And we're pretty close there. Three ounces. So we'll transfer this into our our glass. Normally you just take it straight from the shaker and pour it right into there. And the balance of it is going to be sweet and sour. So you're going to fill that a good, a good part of the way up, all the way up, really. And then you can splash it if you want to have a little bit of fizz on it. Splash it with some soda because then it'll give it a little bit of fizz. And then because this is South Bend iced tea instead of Long Island iced tea, we of course are going to use a lime instead of a lemon to finish it off and garnish. And there we go. We've got lime. Yeah, that's awesome, John. So we've got South Bend iced tea. Nice. Right. So now we we are we're definitely not going to have time. What I had thought about doing is showing you, okay, and this is just this is just math. If you want to do this, this this drink, especially if you're a little heavy on the, the alcohol and you and you uh, don't need as much of the, because uh, what, what your limiting factor is going to be is that this sweet and sour mix doesn't have alcohol. So if you if you mix this and attempt to freeze it ahead of time, it will not freeze solid. It'll get a little bit slushy, but you can mix this up in your proportion. So what I would do is, this is a one quart container. You can get these at Walmart. And these, you know, you, you can fit about four of them into something like this. You can fit a lot of them in, in a bigger in a bigger cooler. But if you freeze them, they'll stay cold 
and you'll have uh, you'll have pre-made drinks of whatever. So it's not just soft and iced tea. You can you can mix up anything that you want, margaritas, uh, anything ahead of time. Um, just be be aware of whether you can freeze it or not based on the alcohol content of whatever you're mixing. So where did I go with? Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to use one of these. And so for this particular recipe, this is a 32 ounce. So this is, this is the one quart, 32 ounces. So take a little bit of a shortcut, do five ounces each of each of the clears. So if you're doing Long Islands, do, you know, triple sec. If you're doing South Bend iced teas, use the, use the blue cure sal. Or like I told you the, the trick, you could still use the triple sec, but then finish it off with the, with the blue food dye. But do five, five ounces of, of each of these in uh, of, of each liquor and that will give you 25 ounces of alcohol and then finish off the rest of it fill it up all the way to the top almost as high as you can go with a uh, sweet and sour mix and that'll give you a good mix you can freeze it and then you'll be ready to go with uh with your uh, south Bend iced tea and i mean this stuff will keep in your freezer forever so you can keep this till this coming St. Patty's Day or the next St. Patty's Day and you'll still have it and it will not go bad and you won't lose any, you won't lose a lot of it to alcohol evaporation because it's so cold in, in your freezer. So that's the, uh, that's South Bend iced tea. So the next one we're gonna do is leprechaun lemonade, which again is shameless pilfer from Lynchburg lemonade, but this is a pretty simple drink. Same idea here. We're going to use a Irish coffee mug. This one's a little different variety. Pour ice in there. And with this, with this drink, it's a little simpler recipe. Pour out some clean ice. When I started making this drink, I was a little worried that because it's made with whiskey that it would throw the color off, but it really doesn't because there's not as much alcohol in this drink. So the color of the whiskey does not impact the, the color of the drink as much as you would anticipate. So Lynchburg lemonade is uh, one, ounce of, um, one ounce of whiskey, a half ounce of triple sec, and then you fill the rest with a, a mix and you, you can kind of do it to your taste of, you can use all sweet and sour mix. You can, you need at least some sweet and sour mix, especially to make the color right and give you the lemonade flavor to it. But most, most of the recipes you see out there will call for like a Sprite or some sort of lemon lime soda. But you can go 100% of the uh, sweet and sour mix and uh, you could just splash it with, with some, either some Sprite, or if you don't have Sprite, you could use uh, soda water and it'll give the fizziness effect, but uh, you'll still get the taste, even if you use 100% sweet and sour. So if you don't want to be dragging cans with you or vice versa, if you, don't, if you want to skip the, the sweet and sour because you don't have room in your cooler, just it, but you have Sprite with you, uh, you, you could use that as, as the, the prevailing ingredient. So, but again, taste it beforehand so that you know what you're, how, how you're making it. But just kind of a, a regular recipe of this would be uh, one ounce of this, which is four counts, one, two, three, four of whiskey. And then you're gonna use, again, because this is leprechaun lemonade, instead of Lynchburg lemonade, we're gonna swap in our blue cure sal. And so instead of a half ounce of triple sec, half ounce of blue cure sal, one, two count. And that's, we're gonna mix that up. There is our Irish coffee mug. Here is our, okay, let me get a new sweet and sour mix. Here's the yellow that's gonna turn it green. And again, in most recipes that you see out there, you're gonna add some Sprite to it. And you can stir that. And again, this is a little bluer than it probably should be. So uh, you'll, you'll, have to, you'll have to balance that out either by cutting back a little bit on the blue cure sal and, and adding more of the sweet, sweet and sour mix. That'll make it a little bit greener. This one is a little bluish. 
but uh, again, the whiskey, I, I was worried when I was, when I was uh, practicing making these that, that they would turn out browner uh, because of the whiskey, but they're really not. And again, with your uh, garnish, uh, instead of a lemon with uh, Lynchburg lemonade, which you typically see a, a lemon sliver sliced, you cut your, cut your uh, lime uh, crosswise like this and get a lime disc. And there is your leprechaun lemonade. Yeah, that's awesome, John. Okay. So the we are at seven o'clock, and I've got two other real quick drink uh, drinks that I'll I'll do pretty quickly. Um, this next one is actually an original, as far as I can. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this one is called the Steeler Teeny. So now we're switching from. Uh, so now we're switching from Notre Dame tailgates into more like a household party. So this one originated at a Super Bowl party that I had at my house back in 2009, I think, when they were playing the Arizona Cardinals. Remember the, the James Harrison 100-yard touchdown? That was the game where this, where this came from. So it's a very simple drink. All it is is... Yeah, in my freezer. Chocolate vodka, vanilla vodka. And I'm actually, I think I'm going to borrow a poor stop, a red poor stop from this vodka, and a black poor stop for the vanilla vodka. And Start with your shaker. Because these are frozen, you don't even really need ice for this because these were right out of the freezer. Now, flavored vodkas are typically slightly lower in alcohol content than, uh, so these are these are 70 proof, 35%, but they still will not freeze. They're still very liquid. So this proves that you can, you can go down to around 30% alcohol content before it starts to freeze slushy. So you don't even really need ice, but if you want to put some ice in here, like if you don't have it frozen whenever you go to make this, or if you if you want it even colder, or you want to dilute it a little bit with a little bit of water so that it's not so stiff, because this drink tastes very tastes very good. It tastes like candy, but it will hit you like a ton of bricks because it's essentially all vodka. So it's a three ounce drink, so it's essentially a six count. So six counts two. You do both at the same time, double fisting. One, two, three, four, five, six. I gotta rinse the links. This still has root sure cell on it. This, uh, I am missing. Oh, there's my cap. Okay, so here is our. Let me rinse out my martini glass. Now you're tempted to say, well, that's no big deal. It's just chocolate and vanilla vodka mixed together, right? And three and to give you three ounces of vodka in a glass. But here's where here's where it makes the difference. Peanut M Ms. You gotta get you gotta cherry pick the right colors. So you gotta get the red, blue, and yellow for the Steeler hypocycloids. Those are your olives in your Steeler Teeny, and there's your straw. And if you're concerned about peanut allergies, back in 2009, I don't think they had a solution for this yet, but nowadays they've got caramel M&Ms that are the same size as, uh, as peanut M&Ms. They've got pretzel M&Ms, they've got mint M&Ms that, the, that are the right size, olive sized or mini olive sized. And so you can make your hypocycloid Steeler Martini in any flavor that you want. Stay, steer clear of nut allergies if they're an issue. I will warn you, so this, this, these colors will bleed in about 10 minutes or so. It'll kind of, you'll kind of get a nice uh, red, yellow and blue effect. However, if you let it for like 20 minutes or a half hour, those colors start to mix and so it ends up starting to be brown. So that's the only thing is that uh, these, these colors from the from the M&Ms will bleed. But uh, that's a festive Steeler themed party drink that you can uh, that you can use. And as far as I can tell, that one is an original. Um, the last one, and I know it's 705, 
that I wanted to mention because it's super easy or it can be made super easy. Again, here's your shortcut for a mule. This is Owens Craft Mixers. These are about $6 at, at uh, the state stores or the fine wine and food or fine wine and, and uh, liquor stores. Uh, Owens Craft Mixers, ginger beer and lime. So instead of making your, your own uh, meal mix, which is not tremendously difficult to do. All it is is lime juice. So you can try to use fresh lime or you can use roses lime juice and ginger beer. And sometimes you, you'll see people use actually some, some grated uh, ginger to make it even sharper. But the thing with that is number one, that's a little labor intensive. You might not wanna drag all that stuff with you if you're going somewhere. So there's your shortcut. And with that thing, you gotta experiment with that to make sure you get your flavor balance right. This makes it right every time. When you open this, it's carbonated. So it's a perfect thing for, to make a, it gives you the right mule every time. All you gotta do is adjust how much alcohol and you can use any type of alcohol. You can use whiskey in it, call it a uh, bourbon, call it a Montana mule. You can use vodka, call it a Moscow mule. You can use tequila, call it a Mexican mule. Or if you're Irish, you can use Jameson or Bushmills and call it an Irish mule. And that's a pretty easy one to, to end on. So I will, we're at 7.06, so I will leave it open for any questions that anyone has. Hey, John, I have a question for you. Yep. So where do you get the Owens uh, ginger beer and lime? This is just at the, uh, at the state liquor store. So I don't think, I haven't seen this. It, they may have it at Giant Eagle. I haven't seen it there, but I have definitely seen it at all of those, like I think they call them fine wine and, and liquor. Spirit stores. Yeah, it's fine wine and spirits. They're in all of them. So this is, this is one, again, I don't, I'm usually not tremendously name brand conscious, but this is worth six bucks because it will get you the right flavor every single time instead of screwing around with trying to balance the, the lime and the ginger and the ginger beer and everything, so. Great. All right, thanks. I have a second question, John. Okay. So when you're, when you're popping those straws in those glasses, are those just the little uh, drink stirring uh, straws? Yes. These a, I'm not sure. I think you could probably get them at that fine wine and spirit, but you can usually get them at a grocery store. I think you can Got get it. it at dollar store as well. It's just, and I mean, there's all kinds of different ones. There's ones that are like, you know, they have got like blue and red stripe down the side. That's all it is. Got it. Thank you so much. John, one additional question. How many four ounce Manhattans have you gotten into a cooler at one time? Well, the, the last time, the, the, the particular golf outing that this was, I, I did uh, Manhattan's was like the front nine. And I think the back nine, we, I did a, a second one. I can't, I'm trying to remember what I did for the back nine. It was, a, it was a different drink, but I had like eight little, eight little jars and they weren't even these nice ones. They were like, I think they were like, like I had like two or three baby food jars and like a couple of them were plastic. So they weren't real fancy. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that there's a, another couple options. If you don't want to go glass, if you want to go the disposable route, you can get these at Walmart. So these are five ounce glasses with, with tops on them. So, uh, and this is about, I think it's like $2 or $3. And so there's 25 of them. So it's a pretty cost, uh, it's it's pretty cheap alternative. Now I'll say that it's not quite as secure. So if you think about what you're going to be doing, if you're if you're on a golf cart, you're going to be rattling around. You're going to sit in your cup holder. You're going to be riding the cart on a tilt like this, and you know all this. So that's why those screw tops are nice. These are not quite as secure. These are almost like food leftover things. But they, these are five ounce cups, but they have tops, and so they will. They don't have straw holes in them, so they they'll. They'll, they'll provide a reasonable amount of spill protection. If you want more spill protect, and this is also, you know, kind of disposable, so you don't have to worry about dragging this home with you. Um, these- I, I assume, John, with two uh, Manhattans, nobody shot par. <laughs> no, no. Well, that was not gonna happen no matter what. No. So, 
in right. fact, there, there, there's a point of, there's a point in which, you know, like there's like any curve, like there's a point of diminishing return. So there's a point in when the Manhattans help you. And then when you go beyond that, it, it hurts you. So if you limit yourself to one Manhattan per nine, that seems to be the there's your alternative. If you if you want still kind of the security of a of a lid that snaps on pretty tight in about a four ounce serving, there's like these rubber made um, plastic jars that are they're like kind of little Tupperware containers, and that gives you about the right size. So that's that's yet another alternative that you could you could you could use for for your golf cart Manhattan or whatever. I mean, it's not that that's just one way to use it, but you could do it. You could do anything with that. You could do martinis with that you could do any kind of mixed drink that that you can come up with and package it that way put it in a cooler and it doesn't have to be for a golf outing it could be for for any 